Hey guys, Paul here from the Complete Personal Trainer Podcast. Today's topic is something I've been talking a fair bit with my mentoring students about over the last couple of days, and it's quite valuable, and I'm going to hold a medicine ball during this podcast, because it's fun. So, uh, basically, the summary is pushing your clients. How hard do we go? Should we do it? Do we need to do it every single session? How do we get the balance between pushing our clients hard and then doing everything right? And this is a really interesting topic uh, because we need to push people harder than what we have done in the past. Uh, that's the whole reason they're coming to see us. It's not they're not coming to see us just for the conversation, although that can be like really, really, you know, involved and deep and life-changing conversation. We don't really need this. Uh, what we need to do is we need to push our clients hard than what they've done before. And it got a couple of examples of this. So this mentoring student I'm working with, uh, as clients who want to get bigger muscles, they want hypertrophy, okay? Easy. Uh, but very worried about uh, chasing fatigue in workouts because the client's overly tired. The thing with training for hypertrophy is it is fatiguing in and of itself. Training for strength is fatiguing in and of itself. Training for increased cardiovascular endurance is fatiguing. The thing is, it's the recovery and the adaptation that makes us better. We all know this. So when you're training a client, they should be gassed out by the end of most training sessions. Like RPE2, um, oh sorry, RPEA, uh, reps in reserve two, is actually really damn hard if you're training people close to real failure. So. When our clients come to see us, this should be a combination of looking forward to it with a little bit of apprehension and fear. And I know that sounds like it's quite ominous and quite horrendous and it doesn't fit into the client-centered coaching model, but if they're having a good day, they're feeling good, they're well recovered, they've been eating, they've been doing things right, you do have permission to kick their ass in the gym because most people don't kick their asses in the gym at all. So. Uh, I think I said this in yesterday's podcast where I had a client who, you know, squatting 70 kilos of eight was complaining about it. I just said, no, nope, you're just going to go until I say stop. They did 13 reps, doubled the output. I had a client yesterday who's like, oh, it's too heavy to lift. And we ended up doing a squat bench and deadlift throughout her training session. And we actually looked at the Australian powerlifting records and she would have broken the record yesterday had she competed. She's quite strong. And the whole point of that was me pushing her harder so she could get a better outcome out of a training session. So how do we apply this into the gym? It will be different based on each different context of how you're training clients, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, semi-private, or uh, a group class. So I'm gonna go through each context here. So for a one-on-one -on -one client, you wanna push them, you wanna push them quite hard. Like if they're only gonna be training, the level of how hard you push them will depend how many sessions a week you do. And then that should influence the programming. So if you're seeing someone three days a week and that's all the training that they do, those three days a week should be damn hard, particularly a very beginner. You don't need to worry about pushing advanced people really hard because they've gotten to the point where they're advanced. They probably need to back off every now and then. But a good, really good rule of thumb is if they swear at you or swear during the training session at at least one point about how hard it is. That is when you know that you found the spot. Clients people training that we can always dig a lot deeper than what we think we can so we need to push hard one of the issues with the evidence-based community and it's not the actual evidence-based practitioners it's our and scientists and uh, authors it's interpretation of it is they don't it's like evidence-based is like oh, a couple reps shy of failure you shouldn't chase fatigue no it's not saying that at all it's saying you should chase fatigue just not absolute fatigue so one-on-one -on -one clients, they're seeing you like three times a week and you're the only training you have, smash the crap out of them, but do it within the boundaries of good technique. When you're pushing people hard, don't be afraid to do less than perfect reps. So what I mean by that, and just to clarify this, is the first couple reps of any set should be pretty close to perfect. They should be really good form. Um, but if you want to excel that, like no one's ever done the pretty 1RM. If your 1RM is still pretty and your form's still looking uh, absolutely pristine in every single way. You haven't hit a true 1RM yet. It should look a little bit gross in some point. And that shows that's a weakness that you can improve. It's not like a problem. It's just like, all right, cool, we can do a little bit better here. So 
if someone's pushing hard on say squats for example their back may not go into full flexion they may lose a little bit of lumbar extension they may lose it should slow down speed out of the hole so pushing people hard that's fine if they take a breath in between sets to like, like get their cardiovascular system under control or to help summon the lactic acid subside from their muscles as long as it's only one or two and they can keep going that's absolutely fine push people to that point you want to stop the sets shy of technical failure so you don't want to see like a squat with someone's lower back just rounds up and they come up like that it's just not the way to do it in a semi-private environment so if you're working with groups of people anywhere from two to say five people make it competitive in some way that's how you can push your clients people will always do more in a group environment than they will do by themselves so not always there are some exceptions to the rule but most people will always do more and work harder with other people around so what you need to do is facilitate that by creating a little bit of competitive environment get your main part of your work done and then do a little bit of competition every now and then don't be afraid to deviate from the program particularly in the beginner and the intermediate client range to push someone a little bit further as i said in the rpe uh, podcast yesterday People will not push themselves to where they can go. People are always capable of a lot more. So we can push that and they will get better. In a group training environment, um, it's the biggest thing to get people to work harder is people will always be working quite hard there in the group, but individual accountability is the most important thing there. So making sure that you get around the group as much best you can throughout the structure of that class to make sure that everyone's pushing. So observe what they're doing. So say it's a group class and people are lifting weights. If you see that they're only squatting like a 30 kilo weight and they can squat way more than that, it's your job to go up to them and push them. It's your job to also make sure people record their workouts to make sure that they are pushing again and again and again. And if you see a client's plateaued at a particular exercise, one last tip for today. If you see a client's plateaued at a particular exercise, your job is to see if it's a matter of weak points, staleness, or effort. And in most of the general population clients, I'd say 60% of the time, it is a deficiency in effort that is stopping someone from achieving more out of that particular training exercise. Uh, case in point was my client um, that I talked about yesterday with the squats. It was effort that was stopping him from doing um, more squats. It wasn't, he, it wasn't stale, he hadn't plateaued, he just wasn't putting in the volitional effort to get better. So guys, please make sure you push your clients. Clients should kind of be covered in sweat and look like crap at the end of a training session because that's what a good training session looks like no matter what the outcome unless you're deloading. But for a deloading session, that's a totally different kettle of fish. I'll do a podcast tomorrow on how to handle a deload in the PT environment. Thanks heaps for watching, guys. Please leave some ratings on the iTunes and things and thanks for the people who've reached out to me. It's awesome. Really love chatting to you all. Any questions, let me know and I'll speak to you soon.